Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming on in the room this morning. I'm Pastor Dave Fano, New Life Church of God, Palmetto, Louisiana. This is our home base. But I'm so grateful that you tuned in today. If you're in the area, you still have time to come down and join us. For those of you who are gathered from places north, south, east, and west, we're here because we're believing in the power of God. We're living in the most exciting time, I feel, for the church since the first century. There are wonderful opportunities. And I know those of you who are attempting to live for Jesus Christ, you come against negative forces, negative messages, seeking to pull you down and push you out. Today, the Apostle Paul helps us in our message today as we find ways to live a positive life in a negative world. So come on in. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we assemble. 
humble ourselves this morning. There are times that it's so easy to lose the awe of God's creation, to lose the awe of God. Our message time later on in our services, uh, we settle the point that uh, we choose to believe God's eye, God's opinion. And so uh, even with that, we miss the awe of God's creation. Every day is just a bland day. Every day is just an ordinary day and we miss the all our hearts are never amazed at God's creation we're never amazed at what God has done and what God is doing we just live a humdrum life and many times we're caught up in the negative pieces our message today also reminds us that we can overcome some of the negative and so our scripture reading this morning as we ready ourselves is from, from Psalms 8 the all of God, uh, that hymn from uh, uh, probably almost 100 years old, uh, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. That songwriter was caught up in Psalms 8, in the all of God. Man, the sun rose today. There was a glare of fog. There are clouds. We've been experiencing the rain. Then in summertime, the heat, the sun shines, the awesomeness of God. Sometimes we feel like we have nothing to worship God about. We can just be caught up in the awe of God, the awesomeness of God. And so Psalm 8, our scripture reading for, uh, for the morning. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you even care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Father, how majestic is your name today. We allow our minds, our hearts, and our spirits this morning to be overwhelmed in awe at the greatness and the vastness of your creation. When we hear the scientists talk about um, light that has traveled millions and billions of miles even to be in the sight of the earth. When we hear them talk about wanting to go to the moon to establish some bases so that they can travel to Mars. Oh, Lord, but yet you have sent all of this into the space, Lord God, into the universe. How wonderful you are. And yet you are mindful of us. And here in the Psalms, the angels got a little jealous that you've even placed us above the angels. Oh, my Lord God, so undeserving, but oh, what love our God has for us. And so we gather to worship your name, and even in these moments of time. But Lord, may your praise and may the awe of your creation always be marveled by our hearts and our minds. Yeah. Oh Lord, we bless you today in the sanctuary. We welcome you in this place. Come, receive all adoration and praise and honor as we are in awe. Even of how you allow humans to create an air conditioning system. To create a wall and a source where we don't have to swap the mosquitoes this morning. Oh, that's worthy of all, all by itself. Lord, we just want to praise you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Let's praise the Lord as you're physically able, as we gather in the hall of our great God.
watch it before we get into the New Orleans Saints. We watch it before we give it to any festival. We watch it before we give it to any other football game or establishment. Blessings and honor and glory belong unto him. He has our lives.
We pray for the world around us. Father, as we position ourselves as followers of Jesus Christ, as the church, Lord God, that we can we can be salt and light to a world who's dark and decaying and dying, oh God. We pray for the systems of this world. We pray, Lord God, for a makeover, Lord God. We pray that your spirit of truth and integrity and honesty, Lord God, would prevail in all systems of the earth, Lord God. I know that it's foreign to them, Lord God, but you are lifting up, Lord God, followers of Jesus Christ. Position them, Lord God, in areas and ways that they can be sold in light, Lord God. Even if it's praying with the mayors of this parish, Lord God. Even, Lord God, if it's giving counsel, Lord God, to the leaders and blessings and encouragement, oh God. Thank you for positioning the body of Christ for times like these, for days like these, in the name of Jesus. So as we've given you permission to meet our needs, meet the needs of the world at large, oh God, as we're believing for salvation, we're believing for a spiritual awakening, oh God, we're believing that even in this new season, Lord God, we're going to see you arise stronger than ever. You're welcome to this place. You're welcome to do miracles. You're welcome to touch bodies and minds. You're with, you're able, Lord God, to lift folk from depression, oh God. You have our permission, Lord God. Say and deliver, Lord God. Even if there's somebody getting out their bed right now, Lord God, to view us or even to join us, Lord God, we say thank you, Lord God, for awakening souls and hearts that we can all live to give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 you to be salt and light in the world that you live in. 
Last Sunday, we were challenged with two opinions. If you recall the message, uh, as the prophet Elijah had to get on the people as he battled the prophets of Baal. You know, if it's God, let God be God. If Baal is God, then let him. But stop wavering between two opinions. Sometimes you're on God's side and sometimes you're on your side. Well, we got to that particular point that we decided to choose God. And today we're going to come back with you. Since we have decided to stay on God's side, how do we live with all the negative stuff around us? And so today we're going to give a positive life message. Our text of scripture will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll look at verses uh, 13 through verse 18 for our uh, message for today as we drill down uh, again, speaking about a positive life. When we can hold on to God, ah, we know that there is help, there is assistance, there is blessing. And so our sermonic hymn, the hymn before the sermon this morning, hold to God's unchanging hand. Don't let go. You've chosen him, hold to his hand. Don't do like that two-year-old, that three-year-old in Walmart that gets away and wants to go run. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Let's ready ourselves for prayer.
co-workers a change on you. The drop of a hat. But hold to God's unchanging hands. Your friends are talking about you. You want to do right now? You don't want to participate in these jokes now? Oh, they are turned on you. So that hymn says, if your earthly friends, ah, if they forsake you, hold to God's unchanging hands. Hallelujah. You, you just can't be that. Just like you can't be gathering in a place like this. Yeah. As we adore and lift up our Lord and our Savior, encouraging us for the journey. Yeah. The journey that is at hand. Week in, week out. The journey that you and I have this week. We don't know exactly what we would face. Yeah. We don't know exactly what the phone calls will be about. We don't know exactly what some of the, uh, the trouble that may come our way. But we're going to hold to God's yeah. unchanging hands because yeah. we have positioned ourselves to uh, believe his word. Yeah. We're going to believe him. And as uh, the two opinions that may arise, we're going to choose God. So be encouraged, yeah. beloved, as uh, we are on this journey in life, as we are uh, decided to be followers of Jesus Christ. Uh, more than just name brand Christians, flavor of the day Christians, but to be <laughs> followers of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Would you stand with me as you're able for the reading of the scriptures today? Second Corinthians chapter four, beginning with verse number 13. A positive life, a positive life is the title of today's message. The Apostle Paul writes here to, to the church at Corinth. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that, um, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So fix our eyes. Not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Oh, Amen. Right. And give thanks to God. You may be seated this yes. morning. Yes. Hold to God's unchanging hands. Life, eternal. <laughs> eternal life. We are eternal life dwellers even on, the, on today. So we have been challenged to know God for ourselves. We have been giving the permission, we have been giving the insight that we can know God, that we can be in relationship with him. And to be in relationship with God is our choice. We have a choice to be in relationship with God, just like we have a, a choice uh, not to be in relationship with God and kind of to do our own thing. So that choice is indeed ours. God made the first move, and the second move is always up to us. God made the first move, even as we see in Scripture, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, what did he do? He gave his only begotten son. Why? That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And when we have chosen not to be in relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, we're living a perishing life. We're living a life totally on our own strength and our own strength alone. And uh, those of us who know Jesus today, we knew how powerless we were in our own strength. We thought we had it going on. We thought we had friends left and right. We thought we had every base covered in our lives. But the more trouble that came our way, the more that was uncovered and unveiled about our, uh, our, we just did not have enough to handle life. But you know that God reached down and he's offered us his hand in relationship. He's offered us love, his love. He's offered us his power. He's offered us purpose. He's offered us a life in abundance. 
So now with that said, here's an interesting observation. Many Christians are afraid or uninformed or I don't know, maybe they have ignored the opportunity to test our faith in our relationship with God. Understanding and, and, and hearing the welcome and call to be in relationship. And we see that there, the observation is that many Christians are simply afraid to exercise this relationship. It's like, well, I got God. I'm just going to hold on to him the best I can and just kind of coast through life. But being in relationship with God comes with, oh, so much more. And this faith that has allowed us to reach out in relationship with God, uh, we need to understand that we can test this relationship with God. Even as God's word gives us many, many promises, we don't have to leave the promises in the bank, but that we can access the promises that God gives unto us in his word. So we recognize that, and we recognize that folk who have ignored the opportunity to exercise their faith in God, we see that many times they are unhappy with their present state, they're unhappy with their present existence, but at the same time, apparently afraid or unknowledgeable to reach out to God in faith. And sometimes we settle for some crosses that were not meant for us to bear. And we justify some of the issues and areas in our lives. Well, you know, Jesus had to bear his cross. Let me bear my cross. Listen, we can drill down in the word and find out, is that a cross that we need to be bearing, to, to bear? Or is that something that God is giving us a wonderful promise that we can see wonderful things take place in our lives? Listen, you have very little to lose by exercising your faith, except maybe you can lose your problems. Maybe you can lose some of your helplessness. Maybe you can lose some of your sleepless nights. Maybe you can lead, lose some of the disrebellion of maybe your children or grandchildren. What We have so little to lose to begin to go to God in faith and to make demands upon the relationship that we have with him according to what his word lets us know. And so therefore, we understand that a fool is someone who knows they are foolish but does nothing about it. A wise person is someone who know that they are foolish, but they seek to do something about it. All right. So the difference between a fool and a wise person, both of them recognize that they are so limited in knowledge and understanding, but the wise person seeks to do something about it. So what we do not know about what has been offered unto us, we want to access that. We want to learn how to deal with that, how to receive what God has in store for us. Because we're believing that God has so much in store for us. And I pray that every time you gather together in the sanctuary, every time you gather together, if you're viewing online, to recognize that God has so much in store for us. We just don't have to wallow in our problems and to say about our past lives that we live. Well, I guess I deserve what I'm dealing with now. We have to recognize that God offers us, oh, so much more. Amen. And so as the Apostle Paul writes in this second letter to the church at Corinth, he has felt attacked by some for his stance that he has for Jesus Christ. And he's feeling a bit attacked as he writes in our text of scripture. And so even as you looked earlier in, 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 this, in this fourth chapter in particular, as he writes about some things, and he talks about the, 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 the life, it's fragile, jars of clay, uh, recognizing that, recognizing that we're bombarded, we're hard pressed on every side. We are perplexed. We are persecuted, abandoned, struck down. We're going through all of these negative situations in life, but yet Paul is still saying that we're able to stand. We're able to arise. We're able to see what God is yes. doing. And so Paul feel that he feels that he's been attacked, okay? Attacked for his life with Jesus. He's, he doesn't feel he's been attacked because of the mess he's caused. 
cause a messiness. See, sometimes we feel that we're being attacked and we've been causing the mess the whole time. But Paul is speaking about being attacked when you arise and stand up for Jesus. When you identify yourselves with Jesus and negative stuff comes your way because of your profession of faith. This is when Paul speaks to us. Now, if, if, if there's somebody out there and the problems you deal with in life because you've been so messy, you need to turn all over to Jesus. Because I want you to know that God's not going to be involved in any of your mess if you don't repent from your mess. And rise up and seek to live with integrity and truth and righteousness. Watch God arise on your side through whatever negative stuff comes your way as a result of you being identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so in our text of scripture, the Apostle Paul, he takes this opportunity to clarify his position so that he can march forward in life and not letting the forces of negative stuff derail him or push him backwards. And so you know that there is a way to deal with the negatives that come across in your life as you stand for Jesus, as you are identified with him, as you are attempting to do the right things on your jobs, as you are attempting to do the right things in your family, as you're attempting to do the right thing among your peers, understand indeed that there are those negatives that come across our lives. But today I tell you, don't go into a shell when negativity comes your way. Right. Understand that you are still in relationship with a mighty, awesome God. Yeah. And to understand yeah. that we can still remain in faith even when the forces of darkness, even when hell itself seemingly comes against you with wave after wave of negative news of negative reports, of negative circumstances. Just don't clam up in a shell as negativity comes your way. Yeah. Remain in faith, my friend. Oh, yeah. Remain in faith. And so any of you who have at least tried to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you know the negatives that have come your way. Negatives in regards to messages like, oh, you're trying to live right. Oh, you're still going to church. Are oh, you still doing this? Are oh, you still trying to do the positive things? Look at you. Look who you hanging around. Look at you. You think you're better than somebody else. Look at you. You don't hang with us like you used to hang with us. You don't club with us like you used to club with us. Look at you. Who you think that you are all of a sudden? Yes, Lord. When right. you're trying to live to be a follower of Jesus Christ, there are negatives that come your way. And so my message to you is even, do, do not answer the negatives that comes your way in your lives with more negatives. Yes. Don't answer negatives with more negatives. Right. You know, right. back in the day when you was kids, somebody talked about your mama, you do what? <laughs> you talk about that mama. Right? Yeah. Answering negatives with negatives. And then you go to the grandma. And then you go to the third generation. <laughs> the you go way back to folk that you don't even know trying to top a negative with a bigger negative. Yeah. Yeah. So we understand that. Let me, let, let me share a mathematical problem with you. Uh -huh. A negative plus a negative equals a bigger negative. Yeah. A negative, a little negative plus a little negative still equals a bigger negative. Okay, huh? sure. Some folks, some, some students have kind of assist us in there. Hmm? Negative two plus negative four. When the signs are the same, you do what to them? You add them together. So yeah. negative two plus negative two equals negative four. Right. So a negative plus a negative will always be a negative. Right. So even as we are rising as a people of God, we understand that there's a way to counter negativity, negative things that come our way, negative things that exist in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our area. We don't combat them with further negatives. You have a gun, you're going to shoot at me, I'm going to get my gun. 
a bigger gun and I'm going to shoot at you. A negative plus a negative is always a bigger negative. And the people of God who have eyes that have been opened, understanding that there's a greater way to approach negative stuff around us and in our lives and in our families than just going out and joining them. I can, you curse me, I'm going to curse you even more. You break something that I have, I'm going to break something that you have. And even, even the, the teachings of the New Testament overcame that. You've heard, the, you've heard it said in the Old Testament, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth back in the Mosaic law doing Moses time. But Jesus came to show us a better way, to show us a positive way, a more excellent way. How love can be so pervasive, how love can be so powerful, how love can be so dominating in our world today. And so the only way to overcome a negative is with a bigger positive. A bigger positive. Okay? So I start off with a negative two. How do I cancel out a negative two and make it a bigger positive number? Well, I have to add a positive three or higher. Negative two plus positive three equals what? A positive one. Okay, we're going to go to math class again. Boy, some of y'all violin school so long ago, I'm not even caring. You can at least pull out your phone and get the calculator. Minus two plus a plus three equals a plus one. And so we overcome, we overcome negatives with a bigger positive. And so that's why I like the Apostle Paul. You couldn't intimidate him with negative things. You couldn't come against him and attempt to attack him and to pull him down. Either way you tried to come at him, he had a bigger positive at hand to deal with, to come against you. Remember, they came against Paul and, and they told Paul, we're going to kill you. And Paul said, cool, to die is to gain. Yeah. Then they came against Paul and said, okay, we, we, we're going to spare your life. We're going to let you live. Paul said, that's cool too. To live is Christ. Yeah. So either way, if you want to kill me, I win. Yeah. If you want to let me live, I yeah. win. Right. And so negativity couldn't destroy Paul, couldn't push him back. Yeah. There was something positive right. with the Lord Jesus Christ, always larger right. than whatever negative stuff comes yeah. against you. Yeah. 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 So Paul understood what this growing relationship with his Lord and Savior could mean for his life. And so the calling is for more and more followers of Jesus Christ who have the courage not to let negative stuff have the last say so. That there are better ways to deal with negative stuff than just to deal with negative stuff, a negative comment. Somebody hates you. Somebody is talking about you. Again, let me just say this particular piece. If you've done wrong, if you've not done the, crime, the right thing, if you're out there doing uh, un unrighteous things, they need to talk about you. Let me just say that. Get that clear. Get that straight. I'm not talking about you out there living wickedly and you want to come up and say, oh, Jesus is against you. Listen, Jesus is against you and your unrighteousness. You need to get your unrighteousness straight. To recognize and to understand what it is to really be persecuted for the That's sake right. of Christ. Yeah. For the sake of arising unto Christ. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, uh, again, uh, we need followers of Jesus Christ who have the courage to not let the negative have the last say so. Uh -huh. There are better ways to address the negatives. Right. Mm -hmm. You may hear somebody say, well, there are no young black males following Jesus around here. And you could say, black male, cool, meet the first one. <laughs> Overcoming. Right. Rather than say, well, I guess I'm going to join them. Let me go hang with my buddies on the corner. Let me get my little blood together because everybody else is doing it. Let me kind of join in here. If you can't, if you can't beat them, you might as well join them because I don't want to be talked about. Yeah. Listen, they're talking about you anyway. And right. you out there with them. That's right. Eyes yeah. are open to hear, yeah. to receive, and to yeah. know wisdom. So they say all kind of things. Some folks may say, well, there are no young Christian families around here. There are no Christian parents that are seeking to raise their families in a Christian way. Cool. You could say, meet my family. All right. 
and ways to overcome the negative stuff yeah. rather than saying nobody is doing this, nobody is doing that. Cool, meet this one mm -hmm. who's standing up for the Lord Jesus oh, Christ. Lord. Ways yeah. to overcome yeah. that. Somebody may say, well, there's nobody around here being taught about righteousness and taught how to live right. And you can say, well, why don't you come join me at New Life Church and hear and be under the teaching of how to live righteously, how to live honorably before the Lord, how to live a positive life. Yeah. There's always a way to, to, to overwhelm the negative messaging that comes your way. And so listen, negative people always look for the negative. And so you and I are still in the process of being retrained because that's, that's, that's what darkness, that's what sin has trained us in. And again, some, some you graduated with a PhD in sin. I mean, you got sin down so much you could sin with the, you could sin in your sleep. You were so good. But to, to understand that now that you are honoring and serving the Lord, we can recognize that we can transition out of some of our negative pieces. Again, we can be trained in negative responses. People who have been, they saw that model in their parents. They saw it modeled in their grandparents. Understand what's being passed down, what has been passed down unto you. And to say, you know what, I'm not going to be such, that, such a negative person. I've heard my siblings, I've heard my father, I've heard my mother. They're just negative, negative, negative. And so when you can hear the good news of Jesus Christ, it, it, it awakens something in you to say, you know what? I don't need to be so negative. I don't need to push people down. I don't need to be so judgmental. I can be positive. I can see something positive. I can be the encourager to somebody around me that I come into contact with. Because knowing that the systems of this world has trained me in negative stuff. Yes. Right. Trained me into be conflicting with yes. everybody around yes. me. Yes. Recognizing all of that. You know, I can remember times, and I'm sure you guys have been in conversations in the grocery store. And there was this one lady that came and everything she had to say was negative. Complained about this, complained about that, negative this, negative that, negative that. And I just made a positive statement about how wonderful our God is to bless us with an opportunity to come into shop together. Boom, cut that off. Cut that off. Cut that off. There's a way that we can deal with negative conversations that comes our way. And if we don't watch it, again, it's easy to be enveloped in that negative environment. If you're on your jobs with negative people around you, they're always griping and complaining about the boss, about the supervisors. If you're not careful, what do you find yourself doing? Griping and complaining. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, that's a bad look. They just hired them because they like them. They hired them because that's their family. Ah, nigga. Wait a minute. If you begin to catch yourself, let me change some of the conversation around the negativity. And like, isn't it a blessing to have a job? Isn't it a blessing that on the first we can have a check to come our way? What a blessing that truly is. That's right. And so helping us, retraining us. Again, part of that discipling piece that comes with knowing Jesus Christ. There are areas in our lives that have to be retrained. And some of us, whether it's our upbringings or whether it's how we were wired with the negativity. Everybody in our family talked negative. And that's what we need to ask. Holy Spirit, fill me. Yeah. Give yeah. me a new understanding. Give me a new talk. Give me a new conversation. Because I don't want to keep on dwelling on this old negative conversation. Amen. And so you can ask the Lord for that. And so those conversations that we are in, it, that we can change, that we can address, that we can uh, begin to manage in a different way, to change conversations, the way to, again, cancel out a negative is with a bigger positive. Amen. Bigger positive. Oh, yeah. How great is our God? How awesome right. is our God? And we believe that. Yeah. We need to believe that carrying him and carrying his word will yeah. indeed, if nothing else, in the spiritual realm, cancel out that negativity that we have that we that comes against us over and over again. Yeah. And so in the midst of a negative world, in the midst of hardship, in the midst of persecution, faith has a way of, a, of rising above all of this. 
In the midst of whatever you may find yourselves in, of faith, that relationship, that ability to make demands of God, to see what's in his word, to help us to live our lives, that faith has a way of arising above all of the hardship and all of the persecution that comes our way. And so even as Apostle Paul closes his fourth chapter, he cheers his listeners on towards victory. Even as we see there in, in verse 16, he says, therefore, don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't surrender. Don't think that it's, it's helpless in a hopeless case. He says, don't lose heart. So outwardly, outwardly, we're wasting away, yet inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Because, listen, in our combating negative stuff, even from the pits of hell, right. that's a part of our training. That's a part of our training of preparing ourselves for this reward that's coming our way. We're entering into training. We're in training with that as we combat the negative stuff. We combat the negative situations in positive ways. The Apostle Paul says we're being renewed because this is achieving for us our eternal reward. It helps us to work out our salvation day in and day out. Negative stuff coming our way, yeah. coming against us, is helping us to work out our oh, eternal yeah. salvation. Yeah. So we can be like the Apostle Paul. Bad stuff happens our way, cool. <laughs> we'll use it to work out our salvation. Oh, yeah. Positive things come our way, cool. Thanks be to God who meets all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Yeah. So the devil becomes yeah. confused. Mm -hmm. Don't know how to come out, come at you again. Come at you with bad stuff, you take it and grow stronger in Christ. Yeah. He comes at you with negative people, you take that and become more and more Christ-like. Yeah. The devil's scratching his head, I don't know how to beat this woman. I don't know how to beat this man. He takes everything that I throw against him and uses it in a way to strengthen his walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. And so the devil say, okay, listen, football season's over with. I'm going to take my break. I'll see you next football season. And the devil leaves you alone for a season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. And so when you can realize where God has brought you from, there's a praise that arises in your spirit. When you can look back, even as you face the mountains that you are, that you are climbing even now, you can look back and say, I once... I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but yeah. now I see. Yes. You can look back and look ahead and say, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. You can yeah. look up and to say, if God be for me, who can be against right. me? Yeah. All right. You can speak the word of faith day in and day out as you face negative circumstances. I can do all things yeah. through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. For in yes. all of these things, yes. I'm more than a conqueror. Yes. I'm telling you, you get the secrets of life. Yeah. The secrets to life. All right. Dealing with negative people around you, negative consequences. Don't turn and be like them. All right. Don't turn and be like them. Amen. Understand that it's just helping you to work out your salvation each and every day. It's helping you to be more and more of a conqueror yeah. in life. Yes. Again, being in a place like this helps to strengthen you. You can do it. You don't know what you will face this week, but don't face it with negative stuff. Don't face it with negative remarks and negative comments. Build up your faith in yeah. Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. To know if something comes against you and you've been targeted, yeah. you've been, you're going to use that targeting to grow stronger. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to waver between two opinions. Right. I'm going to let you be God and trust you with my life. Yeah. Yeah. Because who else on earth can I trust? All right. I have none but you. And so as you face your negatives, friends, whether it's going to your house today, I'm sorry. Maybe somebody goes home today and face negative stuff. I don't know. Whatever it may be, whatever you face, they will come. Negative things, never negative confrontations, crisscross things will come your way. I just encourage you, put God first. Don't waver. Don't be of two opinions. Put God first. 
Second of all, keep adding faith. Keep adding God's word. Keep pouring God's word into you. That you can know that you have that vision of what's possible, what's attainable, what's achievable, what God offers you. Add faith. And make demands of God's word as we started. Some folks, they just, they don't know how to make demands of God's word. And they just, they're in relationship with God, but it's just, okay, I'm just on my own right now. No, you're not. No, you're not. Add faith to your life as you put God first. Yeah. And then keep on searching yourselves. Keep on searching. Where am I at fault? Where am I being messy? Where am I being gossipy? Where am I about pulling people down and never pulling people up? Where am I about always seeing the negative and stuff? You know, search yourself. Where are you at fault? And then speak and act on a larger positive as you confront the negative. Speak and act on a larger positive. That's faith. Speak and act on a larger positive. And use everything that happened your way for a stronger person, a stronger disciple. Amen. Even as we live in smaller areas, the word comes out is that, oh, in small areas, people are so messy. They're so negative. They don't have nothing to go for. They don't see any education. They don't see any. They just, they just hover in their mess and mess. It's like, oh, I want to get away from here. But to understand that this is a better place to grow stronger in Christ at. Why? Because we use all of that to grow stronger. Paul says, cool, cool, whatever it is, I'm going to use it to be stronger. I'm going to use it in my growing because I'm working out my salvation. I'm being renewed day by day. It's achieving for me an eternal reward. And before we know it, we're flipping the script on some things. People see us coming and know they can't have all that negative stuff, all that negative talk, all that putting down on people. It's a new day. So friends, you and I have a choice. As I started our message this morning, talking about there are many who are, are followers of Jesus Christ, but they make no demands of the relationship. What happens in life, they have to adjust on the fly and do the best they can just to hang in there, just to hold on to them. But what we're saying, even in understanding that there, there's a better way to face negatives in our lives, negatives that come across our pathways. And our calling is to understand that we've been called to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we do so, whatever comes our way in life, cool. If it's positive, look how blessed I am. If it's negative, okay, I'm using this to work out my eternal reward. Let's confuse the forces of darkness. Let's confuse hell. That hell scratches his head. Hell can't wait for us to go to bed at night because it's tired of dealing with us every day. We have worn hell out. Hell says, go to bed, take a nap. I'm tired of dealing with you. I can't conquer you. I can't overcome you. Because you have found this secret in life. And hell will try to quiet you and silence you because don't want anybody else to know what you know. Shh, don't tell right. nobody. Don't tell nobody to watch. Shh, don't tell nobody to come to church. Shh, don't tell nobody. And hell will do whatever it can to keep this wonderful, abundant, secret aspect, way to live in life with the Lord and positive away from it. And let me tell you another thing. that When you position yourselves in the positive of the kingdom of God, you're going to see more and more negative stuff stop hanging around you. You're going to see it. It's going to not hang around you. People come to me all the time. Oh, you didn't hurt that? I'm like, what you talking about? I'm not even hanging around that kind of stuff. I'm not even hanging around that kind of stuff when news come from that. What you talking? I don't have a clue what you're talking about. You find more and more of that negative stuff not even latching on to you anymore. Not even confronting you anymore. There are, there are more battles to fight. Don't feel that it's going a totally away. There are more battles to fight. But again, when we stop, when we stop wavering from two opinions, there's an anchoring that takes place as we position ourselves on God's side, 
on his side. And to know he teaches us and equips us to work out our eternal reward through whatever happens our way that we can be as the Apostle Paul. Whatever happens our day, whatever comes our way, everything is cool. We're going to use it one way or the other. I want to pray with you this morning. And even as I encourage you to search yourselves and to search your lives with where you are, that becomes an important piece. Just don't say that you got it all together and you are the only one who's right. You've already been deceived if you approach life in that particular mechanism. And sometimes our pride, it comes before the fall, the scripture says, but our pride won't allow us to see ourselves. Our pride has so positioned us that everybody else is wrong and we're the only ones that are right. And then sometimes our self-confidence goes when we have to humble ourselves. Let your self-confidence go. Get your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. You may feel everybody is talking about you. You may feel that you've fallen down and everybody's laughing at you because you didn't get it right. Look, let all that self-confidence stuff go away. Stop trying to live to please people with your reputation. Stop trying to please people with your reputation. We are God. We are God. Whatever he needs to do to knock us off our own throne, so be it. So as we pray together, why don't you pray to God? You know what you need to, what, you, what the Spirit of God has enabled you to hear today. Hear it with those ears that your spirit can speak unto the Lord Jesus. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you that uh, even as we've chosen not to keep on wavering in two opinions, oh God, simply to honor you and to choose you in our lives, we thank you, oh Lord, for your love unto us. Thank you that we don't have to be so discouraged because of the world that we're living in today. But that we can be encouraged to know that whatever whatever day we're having, whatever comes our way in the day, we can still use it in looking at our eternal reward, oh God. Teach us this. May we become more and more disciples of your word and what the word has in store for us. As we bless you, we honor you, Lord God, all the days of our lives. Forgive us in those areas, Lord God, that we've built out, building our own reputation. And we've been thinking that we've been trying to honor you, but it's been about us the whole time. Yeah. Show us with your wisdom and with your insight. But I pray that those who understand that there's a new course in life that they need to be taking, help them to know how to practice and identify the positiveness of life. Some folks want to give up, want to surrender. Think about harming themselves and endangering themselves and endangering others, oh God. Bring them to another level in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh Lord. That as they honor you and they love you, that you, they can see what you have ordained for them, oh God. Some of us have been from birth wired to negativity. But God, we sever those ties. It's not about our reputation. It's not about what we feel to be our justice. We want your justice to take place because we believe that you have our back. We believe, Lord God, that as we live to honor you and to praise you, Lord God, that you cause all things to work together for good. And in the causing of all of that, if it's negative stuff, cool, we use it to work out our eternal salvation. If it's positive stuff, we'll keep on giving praise and thanks and glory and sharing this good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For your forgiveness, we say thank you. For the empowering of your Spirit's presence in our lives, we say thank you. We receive that, oh God. Thank you that we are strengthened to face whatever we got to face on this coming week, oh God. Be glorified and be present in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give thanks unto the Lord today. Amen. seen the light and you want to receive Christ into your life, I uh, encourage you to do so even as you would stand. I want to pray with you. There's somebody who wants to surrender it all to Jesus Christ. We want to recognize that and to pray for you that the Lord will be glorified in your lives. Amen. We continue to offer Jesus to whosoever will, whosoever will. Thanks be to God. All right, we feel that there has been an equipping and a preparing that is going on that you're ready to go chase the devil right now. Even with one bad foot, you can still chase the devil. Amen. Whatever it be, whatever it may be, we, we honor the Lord and thank you for 
Uh, you're committing to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And uh, may you face this coming week. Some of you know what's on your calendar, what, know what's on your agenda. God is here to help you and to strengthen you. Others of us don't have a clue. We just know where we're supposed to be, where we're not supposed to be. And maybe that's the best part of it all together, right? Don't be where we're not supposed to be. Right. Don't be where we're not supposed to be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you as you continue to be followers of Jesus Christ, even through the, uh, the support of this ministry. We believe that uh, we continue to be one of the uh, shining lights in our area, in our community. And as we continue to partner together in ministry, the light of the kingdom of God shines brighter and brighter. So thank you for supporting our ministry and supporting and sowing those seeds for you, for the harvest that comes back to you. Some folks buy into the part of giving tithes and offering as, as it's about, oh, well, I'm going I'm, to I'm lose out. I'm going to lose out. No, it's about what comes back unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Again, one of those aspects that we don't make demands in our relationship with God. We don't know. We don't want to know. We're just griping and complaining to God about what he wants from us. God wants to bless us more than we could have ever imagined. We live in faith. We live to give him thanks and praise. So thank you for your continued support in ministry. And because of that, I think we'll be right back here next Sunday. Amen. That sounds like a good plan. Amen. We'll be right back here Sunday. Feel free to invite somebody, to bring somebody, shake somebody, uh, get them out of their bed today. I was told today somebody was ready to leave and somebody to be in the house. They waited for that person to get out of the bed so they can come on to church in the morning time. That's a good deal. That's a good thing. So we'll be back here second Sunday in the month of uh, September as we honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Opportunities are listed. Uh, Wednesday, if you were with us, many of you were with us, we started an introduction to a new fall series that we're doing uh, about the character of Christ, uh, knowing how to access and to avail and to live in accordance to the character of Jesus Christ. So if you're on, you also know there's a reading assignment uh, and to pull some things out of the reading assignment. You can go back to our Facebook page and you can view that and you can lift up your assignment. If you're on uh, our email listing, the assignment is there in that document. As we begin to ponder the character of Christ and how we can bring that character to our lives since we've been called to be Christ-like. Amen, amen. So again, Two things we can do. We can talk about how hard it is to live for Jesus and nobody can live for Jesus. Or we can talk about, oh, there's a way I can be discipled and trained to be like Christ. Oh, my. Again, negative, positive. And to overcome a bigger negative with a bigger positive. Thanks be to God. So we're so excited and so glad we're going to let our students know y'all don't have to go to school tomorrow. That's good. That's a wrap. You can take an extra day off. Uh, just give thanks and praise unto God for, for who he is. So the opportunity that is listed on our, our projection, we encourage you to take note of that. Coming up in two weeks, uh, our state conference there in Pineville, that Friday night, the 16th, 7 o'clock services. Uh, Saturday morning, 1030 service. Our guest preacher, uh, Dr. Ronald Fowler, is not able to be with us out of Akron, Ohio. He's had a death in his family. And so uh, Brother Hondo Smith out of Anderson, he spoke at our camp meeting a few years ago. He'll be preaching uh, there at the Pineville Church of God uh, on um, September the 16th. I checked the schedule, September the 17th. There's a service at 1030. And Gabe, if the service was just a bit longer, I'll stay for uh, Xavier's football game. The football game is at 6. So y'all may have to linger in Alexandria and eat for a while. But I'm going to catch Xavier another time. But they have a whole football game that same Saturday. Who knows? Maybe I'll stumble and fall and got to wait to see that. So just the Louisiana Christian University, Xavier 
uh, is the starting tackle. Uh, their football game is that Saturday there in Pineville. All right, so things can work together for good, believe it or not. All right, all hearts are clear. We're going to stand for our benediction. We're going to release you for a positive afternoon, whether it's going shopping, whether it's taking a nap, whether it's, let me see, watching football. There's a football game tonight, I know that. Uh, whatever it may be, we're going to live and honor the Lord. So, again, those of you who have to give, our uh, receptacle is in the back as you uh, can place your tithes and offering. Online giving is always in order uh, also. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we give you thanks and praise, Lord God, for an opportunity to gather in this place. And we can say it was good for us to be in this place. It was good to view this service online. We are caught up with the awe of God, creating a body like ours, oh God, and creating the universe like he has in wondrous ways. Then sings my soul how great our God is indeed. Now, Father, bless us as we leave this place to be salt and light into a world that's decaying and dark. May we take hold of the mantle of this positive view of life and of your kingdom as we give, live to honor you. Watch over us, protect us. Those who are traveling this weekend, thank you for traveling mercies. Thank you for meeting needs. We pray for areas, Lord God, that are struggling even with water issues. It's not just we who suffer. There are those who suffer even more so than us. We're going to count our blessings. And thank you for our water systems, oh God. In the name of Jesus, help us to count our blessings and name them one by one. Bring us back together again in this place as we gather on next weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You're in the usher's hands.